Welcome to the first video of my YouTube series Getting Started with Eclipse MicroProfile 3. In this first video I'm gonna cover the MicroProfile config spec. With this specification you can inject configuration properties from external sources to configure for example the base URL for your JAXRS client or passwords. To demonstrate to you how it works I'm using a simple Maven project this Maven project has just the MicroProfile 3 dependency and I'm using Java 11. Everything is deployed to the OpenLiberty application server and I've configured the Liberty to just enable the MicroProfile 3 feature and nothing else. I'm using Watch and Deploy to deploy the application on every change to open liberty and um, in the second console we'll gonna see the, the log output whenever I change something. So if you have micro profile in your application you can inject a config bean to your classes and with this config bean you have access to your configuration sources. At default there are three configuration sources defined in the specification. The first one is a file called MicroProfile Config Properties which resides in resources metainf. The other source is um, environment variable of the operating system and the last one is system variables which you pass to your Java application with minus "-d". They all have a different ordinal number, so the MicroProfile Convict Properties file has the They all have a different um, All the three configuration sources have a different ordinal number and regarding uh, your ordinal number a configuration might be overwritten by a configuration source with a higher ordinal number. So the smallest ordinal number has the MicroProfile config properties file with a number of 100. The next is um, environment variables with a number of 300 and the highest one is system variables with a number of 400. So if you specify for example in configuration property like the message here twice once in this microprofile config file and another one in the environment variable of the operating system, the operating system environment variable would override this one in this case. But in this video you will also see how you can create your custom configuration source to inject for example your configuration properties from a database or get it from an external service. So. To start, let's inject this message information here, it's a simple string, to a Java bean. Here I've injected the config object and now I have access to it. So I can say get value and here I have to specify the configuration property key, which is message in this case, and the type of this configuration properties. If we save this and wait for the redeployment, we should see our message printed out to the console. That's the first usage of this config bean. What you could also do, you can inject the configuration property directly into a member variable with this add configuration property annotation from the specification. And here you define the key. And you could also define a default value if the message for example is not present in your configuration sources. So for example let's call it fallback here and give it a name message remove this and print out the new message. Let's see the output should be the same. Yes so if we change for example here message to message 2 and save it and redeploy it 
we should see the fallback kick in because there is no message to defined in this file and I did not specify anything in the environment variables or via system variables. If you don't specify a default fallback and try to start this, your application should throw a deployment exception to warn you that it could not inject this message because it was not present during application startup. Which you see it here, this is the open liberty exception stack trace, which basically says it could not find or could not satisfy the injection of this string because there was none configured in our configuration sources. So let's change this back. What you could also do, you don't have to use the plain string to inject your configuration property. You could also use, for example, the optional data type and wrap it. And here make it a string and say message2. Call this message2. And if we try to print it here, here we have to say So here this is like the same I showed you with the default value behavior, but here we can make use of the, the optional data type of Java to inject a configuration property. So this is also possible. Another nice approach is to use a provider. So let's inject a, a new configuration property, for example, the my app timeout. So here I will wrap the string with a provider. So now we can print out the timeout with the get. I've configured this value here, should be 10. And if we use this provider, whenever we access this configuration property with calling get, the macro profile runtime will make sure to directly access it from the underlying configuration source and always reads the newest values. So if you change, for example, an environment variable during runtime, here you will make sure you always get the latest value which is in your configuration sources. And here in the log output you can see it printed 10 to the console. For injecting values we are not limited to string. There are default converters to convert the underlying configuration property to integers, boolean, doubles or floats. What we could also do, we can inject arrays and lists or sets. And in this example, I want to show you it with our users. So let's inject a list of users and print out every username. So let's say here. We don't need this. And if you configure something like a list or an array, you have to comma separate it. And here I'm using Duke, John, Mike, and Fred. And as you can see in the output here, it works. We are printing out the four different users. So the same would work if we would use an array. So if the default converters are not enough, so if you, for example, need a domain specific property to be injected into a domain object. You can write custom configuration converters. I will show you a simple example here. What you have to do is you have to implement this converter interface from the micro profile specification and then override one method where you get the raw string value passed and have to return the an instance of the object you want. So in this example I'm creating a token which is a custom class of, of this project. 
and it's a simple construction of this object as I'm just splitting by this character and adding the chunks to the public constructor of this class. So let's have a look at this class. This is a token which has a name and a payload and in the micro profile config properties I am configuring here a configuration a my.app.token with the token name and the payload and with this we wouldn't be able to convert it at default we have to activate this converter there are two ways you can do this you could either bootstrap your custom config object with this builder pattern and within here say with converter and then specify the class you want to convert a priority number and pass an instance of this custom config converter and then you would have to reuse this config instance and could have access to this converter what you can also do if you want this converter to be there by default for every config object you can add a new file and place it in meta -inf services this is called arc eclipse micro profile config spi converter and here you just have to specify the fully qualified name of the class of your converter and save it and now it should be there by default and if we go back to our sample injection class we can now inject our private token use the config property to specify the key and can print out the two string method of this token instance so let's see so here you see um, we've constructed our configuration property into our token domain object and are able to inject it wherever we want last but not least we can also specify a custom configuration source so if the three configuration sources are not enough we can specify our own and here we have to implement this config source interface of the specification and have to override some method so the first one which is optional we, we could also not override it here we can specify the ordinal number so in this example I'm picking a the highest one so this is even higher than the system variable ordinal of 400 here it's 500 then we have to override the method get properties where we basically return a map of string and string of our properties if you would use a database you would here query for all available properties here I'm just hard coding it and this custom configuration source just returns values for two configuration properties next method is the actual get value method and here it's a quite simple implementation I'm just checking if the user wants this configuration property or the other one and return the hard-coded one and the last one is we have to give this a name I'm calling it random config source and that's enough so to use this now we have also two approaches to do this we could either go to our custom bootstrapped config instance and say here with sources and just pass an instance to this and reuse this and then only this object would contain this custom config source but if you don't need this and want it to be there at default you can also create a custom file for this which is also next to our converter file but called config source and specify here our custom config source and let's see this now in action in our custom config source we have here access to this message so let's try to print out what our message actually is in our property file we specified hello world java ee8 but let's see what the output is and here you see it's 
not this what we specified here in the file but it's hello world from custom config source and that's the case because in our custom config source the ordinal number is way higher than the property file number and so the property file configuration property got overwritten by this one that's everything i wanted to share with you for this specification and have fun using it Thank you.